Good morning, everyone. Warren Hewitt here at Garage Bands and Beyond. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm totally kidding. I'm just, <laughs> I'm having a silly and totally fun morning here in the studio. And um, I've been watching a lot of Produce Like a Pro videos because, you know, he makes great informative videos. So make sure you check out Produce Like a Pro. I'm not mocking you at all. I love your accent. I'm totally jealous of people with English accents. I think they're awesome. And when I do it, it really sounds more like Dana Carvey doing an impression of the Beatles. So it's really an impression of an impression. It's not very good. You know, Dana's a professional. I'm just a musician with a guitar. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I'm totally screwed around. Good morning, you guys. Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond. Welcome back today. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make some weird, cool, creative sounds with your electric guitars. This is for anybody who has a section of a song that needs some sort of pad some sort of weird sound effect thing in the background but a synthesizer sound might be a little bit too digital a little too synthetic you know what i mean you need something that's weirder and um, guitars can totally do that especially if you layer them up properly um, so right out of the gate i'm going to play you an example of a song that i did for a client please don't forget i do mix for people garageband and beyond.com um, but i'll just play this really quickly uh, by itself first so you can hear it and then a little bit in context just you can hear it. So here it is all by itself. Uh, what do you call it? Six guitar tracks. Listen to this. All right. So there's a bunch of different sounds. There's lots of things going on layered. Uh, let me play it for you all together. Um, so it's a cool sound, and I, I would tell you if you if I let it play till the end, it what it does have that um, Beatlesque esque uh, day in the life outro where it sort of slowly ascends in pitch and then sort of closes to a big halt all at the end. So there's lots of different ways to do this, and I just wanted to give you a few pointers and a couple of examples. You know, this is a bunch of tracks. Uh, I'm going to show you another song in a minute um, uh, that is less track. So of course you're going to be doing tracks that have, you know, at least one of them with tons of delay. <laughs> Right? Like that kind of a delay. I'll show you. This is the effect that I love using. Uh, you know, obviously it's like an electro harmonics uh, copy kind of thing. I like to have the feedback up a lot. I usually do sync the flutter and dirt. This is all sort of up to you depending, but they're really useful for making weird sounds. You're gonna have a guitar track that's doing this. My advice to anybody out there who plans on layering like five or more tracks, you know, even if it's two or more, um, keep the parts simple. If you make every single track really complicated, it just turns into total noise. It's useless that you don't hear like little things don't poke out throughout the section. If you keep it simple and then like at strategic moments, you might, you know, add something a little extra. What you will find is when you combine all of those tracks that like some cool thing will poke out here and then another cool thing will poke out there and another cool thing will poke out there. But the trick is to keeping as individuals keeping them simple. So by keeping it simple, I'm talking about, you know, if you listen to um, like this track right here, this is just the normal guitar track. So there's one track and that's the normal guitar part, but it's keeping it simple, you know, just keep it simple. Here's a harmonized guitar track. Also, I can show you the harmonizer. I love the, the whammy pedal on here. It sounds just like the real Digitech whammy pedal. But you hear that? There's like a lot of repetition. Uh, there's lots of, you know, I mean, it's not the simplest part, but it's not over the top. I mean, if I keep going. And see, like right there, I started like doing the tremolo, like, you know, 16th notes thing, um, you know, just to give it something new in that section. So 
point being is, if you're layering a bunch, keep it simple, strategic moments, get busy. Um, and of course, you're going to want different sounds. Uh, that harmonizer that I was talking about, I'll just show you. It's in the pedal board. It's this, the whammy pedal. Uh, the tuning set to 12 and the mix is at, you know, call it 60%. Um, this is a great way to get one of the parts to poke out using the harmonizer. You don't really hear it when it's all blended together. You do, but you don't. Here it is again all together. You know what I mean? You don't really hear it. But there's there are parts that are doing like bendy things. There are parts that are doing uh, more of the 16th note thing. Part that's like... Parts, um, but I repeated sections a lot. Like when I come up with something that I like, I would repeat it and then move on. Uh, but again, keeping it simple. As you layer them all together, it becomes a chaotic mess, but hopefully it's going in a cool direction. Of course, you can redo it. The other thing I want to suggest is a slide is totally awesome. Um, and usually, you know, I don't even like wear it normally. In this particular case, I did. Uh, but on other songs, you, you, you know, you totally see me like, just like hitting the strings with it, um, getting those nice high pitch sounds. We turn that back on. In other songs, you would catch me doing, you know. Great, like Halloween horror movie sounds. <laughs> Maybe I'm doing this a little bit late. Um, but in this particular case, in this song, the thing that gave it the long ascension pretty much was the slide. Um, it was like, you know. You know, that, that kind of concept, slow ascension up the neck. The slower, the weirder with the slide, I do tend is better. The weirder, the more pitch, uh, or as, let's say this, the more out of pitch that you can be, the better. It, it, this is the key to getting to some of those weirder wailing sounds, getting a good slide. Um, I love these slides. Um, they're called, they're silica slides, and I'll leave a link for them below. The silica, I think it's silicaslides.com or silicasound.com. Silica sound, best slides on the planet. Um, anyway, so that is just, you know, simple. This is a video where I'm just sort of yakking at you and telling you like what I did here is, uh, you know, this and that. But the idea is to give you some concepts to, like I said at the beginning, if you were looking for something to fill in a padded or an area where a pad would be good, where like a Hammond organ is too much or a synthesizer is too synthetic, combining sounds, guitar sounds, and like a bunch of random ones, like I said, playing simple, playing busy, can be really, really beneficial. And you do get that sort of like Beatlesque days, uh, um, day in the life ending. Um, at the very ending of this video, I will play this for you so you can just hear it all the way out. So that's my trick for multiple guitar tracks, you know, but you can do it with just two. So next up, I'm going to play a track that I just finished for another client. Um, and there's just two guitars that are making a cool pad. Uh, so I wanted to show you a more simple version of it. So let's take a look at that now. All right. So in this particular song, it's just this track and this track that are making the weird sounds. Uh, let me play it. Uh, well, let's play it all together. Let's try that first. So this is just the outro. Right, so in this case, it's like a small section in the middle of a song. Uh, you know, we might call this the bridge, per se. You know, we'll, we'll call this the bridge before the final outro. Uh, the client, Paul, what's up, Paul? Love the songs. Paul's a good, uh, good client of mine now. Um, Paul had described, you know, this want for like a not dramatic, but you know, a crescendo at the end, some something that started a place and went someplace. So, you know, I half timed the drums at the beginning half and created this weird sound. Now these are just like seriously delayed guitars let me just play them uh this is the first one which is totally essential right 
That's that one. The next one is actually something. Now, actually, let's try it this way. Let me talk about how I was inspired to even come up with this. When I listened to this song um, before I did these parts, I kept hearing this uh, this note up here. And well, let's just play it just so you can hear it. Oh, I bet we need it. This is the note that I kept hearing. Right? That high... Uh, that high B, it's a B. Um, but I kept hearing it even before I made these tracks. I kept hearing it. Some part of the overtone sequence was, you know, carrying this note out. So here it is all by itself. See if you can hear that high B. There's a couple moments where in the recording, it was sort of like telling me, hey, this high B is like really friendly to this particular harmonic structure. Um, so the first one that I did was actually the, the lower note, which is uh, a harmony. And that note is... Oh, it's E, okay. Um, so we're talking about E and B. That's, uh, you know, obviously... We're talking about like more or less the key of uh, E major. Okay, so the E and the B combined sound like this. Right? So, E and B, you know, obviously we're talking about fifths there. Um, but anyway, let's look at the delay uh, on the pedal board because that one is cranking. Check this out. You can see how much, yeah, feedback is all the way up. The mix is 50-50. The time is set kind of slow. Uh, it's a, you know, a half note triplet and uh, the low cut, flutter, dirt. All of this is totally useful, but is totally up to you. I like a lot of dirt. The flutter can be a little too warbly and will pull things out of pitch. So just be careful with that. But the overall point is that in this particular case, it was just two guitars that created this really luscious, cool sound, but... Also pay attention to how simple these parts are, right? I didn't really go crazy at all, especially well, maybe a little bit towards the end, but they were not as loud in the mix. The other thing that's worth mentioning is you should be noticing these automation points that there are swells and decays and a little swell and another decay. Um, you know, I made the volume come in and out because as that effect grows on its own, it takes on its own life. It doesn't react like a normal guitar sound. It will, it'll sort of swell increase uh, the swell will increase sort of in a random way against the mix itself. Um, so sometimes you got to tweak it just to make it swell where you want it to swell. So I'll play it one more time. So that's just what it sounds like. Now, the, one of the other things I should mention here is that you can automate all of the controls on that uh, delay pedal, right? So if you go to your pedal board here and you go to the true tape delay, you can affect the feedback, the flutter, all of those parameters can be changed with automation, which gives you even more flexibility to create weird sounds that sort of come and go. In this particular case, I didn't need to, um, but just so you know, you can automate your pedals and all of the knobs on the pedals. It's totally useful uh, for that context. Mostly what I want you to take away from this video is that it doesn't really require a, a synthesizer or a ton of hard work to make really original cool sounds that are weird and you know fill in space in a very strange but beautiful way you know what I'm talking about um, this is like one of the more fun parts of being in the recording studio it's definitely one of the more fun parts about being a guitar player I love sort of experimental guitar sounds I love making the sounds I love playing with my guitar in a manner that is not 
like a guitar. You know what I mean? I've totally sat here like banging on the guitar and slapping on the strings with all sorts of weird effects going. And uh, it's been nothing but fun. So I just wanted to encourage you, hopefully inspire you a little bit to come up with your own cool, weird sounds. You don't always need a synthesizer. You can do this with your guitar. It's not as bad as you may think. If you have questions or anything, please leave them below in the comment section, uh, Facebook page, all that kind of stuff. And please, if you really like my channel and appreciate what I'm doing and would like to see this thing continue and grow, please find my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash garage band and beyond that is by far the only way that my channel will survive and i really need some people to you know support me on patreon because man it is rough out here in the internet world these days so uh i'd love the support there and you know the for those of you that are my patrons now i totally appreciate that i'd love it if uh, we could get a couple more over there because it'd just be great um anyway you guys I thoroughly appreciate your support. Just watching my videos for free is totally cool with me because that's what, you know, ultimately that's what I want to do is help you guys make better sounding music in your homes using GarageBand. And uh, that's the ultimate goal of my channel. So I think I've yacked enough. Please check out all the other videos. Hit the subscribe button and the bell. It's not good enough just to hit the subscribe. I'm going to kind of come back and say, you know, here's that ending that I was said I would play. Here it is all the way to the outro. Uh, have a great day, guys. Peace. Pretty cool, right? I think that's a pretty cool ending. Anyway, uh, that's it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.